All righty. You ready? So let's take a look at this problem. First of all, this is the proof. Okay? So we're going to take the limit of that, and I'm going to prove to you that the limit of that is zero. Somewhere in your notes, you need to find, tell, write down that Kruger's favorite trig identity is this. Cosine squared x plus sine squared x equals 1. And I don't know if you ever, if Mr. Karsh or Mrs. Tambo showed you last year, but that comes from the Pythagorean theorem. Did you know that? Yes. Okay. And so I can get a whole bunch of things from this. I can get this, that if I divide both sides by cosine squared x, I can get 1 plus tangent squared x equals secant squared. You've seen that? Right? And I can do the same thing with sine, and I can get cotangent squared x plus 1 equals cosecant squared x. Did I go through that too fast? But this is also what I can do. Again, I'll write cosine squared x plus sine squared x equals 1, and I'm going to write this as sine squared x equals 1 minus cosine squared x. What did I do? I subtracted cosine squared from both sides, right? And then I can write this, sine squared x equals 1 plus the cosine of x times 1 minus, oops, cosine, sorry, cosine of x. This right here is a product of conjugates. Are we okay? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply this in by its conjugate, which is 1 plus the cosine of x. So it's going to look like this. The limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus the cosine of x over x times the conjugate, which is 1 plus the cosine of x over 1 plus the cosine of x. Remember, I'm trying to prove this. So this is your first step in the proof, right? This stuff was just for me to tell you where, why I'm choosing this, okay? This is your first step. My next step is write the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine squared x over x times parentheses 1 plus the cosine of x. I'm going to pause here. Any questions how I went from this line to this line? So from your silence, that must mean everything is okie dokie. Okay. McKenna, what is 1 minus the cosine squared x? Do you know? Give you a hint. It's from my favorite trig identity. You want me to tell you what my favorite trig identity is? It's cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. I want you to look like right here. Yes. Limit. Perfect. Sine squared x over x times 1 plus the cosine of x. Now, people out there are going, well, how does that help? Well, I can break it as two separate functions. I can break this as the sine of x times the sine of x, right? Did everybody agree that's what sine squared x means, the sine of x times the sine of x? Yeah. And this is a times, would you agree with that? Over x times 1 plus the cosine of x. Now, the property says if you have two functions you're multiplying, the limit of that is the product of the limits, right? So what's this limit? 
1. Right? We just proved that a little while ago. Times, well, what's this limit? Can I do substitution? Can I put 0 into here? Now, this is really scary. Does anybody know what the cosine of 0 is? 1. one. Awesome. So down here, I have 1 plus 1. What's the sine of 0? Zero? 0. So what do I get? Well, 0 over 2 is 0 times 1 is 0. And there's my proof. Q, E, D. Quite easily done. OK? So this proof has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 steps. You're going to be able to use your notes on Monday doing that proof, but you'll need to know how to do that proof by the test. Okie doke. Are you all right, sir? <laughs> I lost you somewhere, didn't I? I'm sorry. What did I do wrong? No, it's fine. I can just look back at the notes. It just takes me a little bit longer to process. You sure? Yeah. You, there's nothing I can fill in to help out the process? No, that's fine. Okay. The biggest thing is multiplying it by the conjugate, getting this, which is sine squared, and then breaking up sine squared into two separate fractions. And figuring out the limit of the first fraction and figuring out the limit of the second fraction. And if we didn't have this, you wouldn't be able to prove that. So that's why I had to do that first. Alrighty? Yeah. Okay. So now let's take a look at the examples. Here's the first one, because I know you guys want time to work. The limit as x approaches zero of the tangent of x over x. I think that's number one, right? So that's the same as the limit of x over zero as the sine of x over the cosine of x all over x. Would you agree? So now I'm hoping I don't lose you by doing this. Would you, are you okay with that, that I went from here to here, or do you want me to show you the bridge between the two? Sure? Yes, I can. The sine of x, here's the bridge, the sine of x over the cosine of x times the reciprocal. Now, don't be saying x times x is x squared. That's voodoo math. This baby's in parentheses in here. It's got like, oh, what do they call it? A... Uh, uh, force field around it that protects it. Okay? Are you okay with that? McKenna, you had a question. You're okay? Everybody okay? Does anybody see what the next step is going to be, do you suppose? Sine of x over what? X, beautiful, times the cosine of x is down here, right? What's up here? One. One. Awesome. What's the limit of this baby? One. What's the limit of this baby? Because I right one, so I'm going to have one over one, right? What do I get as an answer? One, which is the loneliest number. Sang by Three Dog Night, written by uh, Harry Nielsen. Okay, just in case you want to know. Number two. The limit as x approaches zero of the sine of 4x over x. Sorry about that. Who could tell me what to do on that? Sophia. Do you see the problem here? Have I done a problem like that before? You have any idea? I think you said something and I didn't hear you. Four over, you want me to put a four here? You want me to put a four down here? Perfect, what's my answer? What's the limit of this baby? One. one, right? What's the limit of that baby? So I got four times one, what's four times one? Four, perfect, very good. Three, the limit 
as x approaches 0 of the sine. I think I did this one in class, didn't I? Yeah. Right? 3x, right? So you should have that written down. I didn't even know I did it. That's bad. That means I'm getting old if I'm trying to do problems that I thought were original. And actually, I typed them before. I did that here the other day, right? Do I need to do this one again? Do you want me to? I will. Okay, you ready? This is going to be the limit. As x approaches 0, there's a 1 out here, Spencer, right? So it's got to be 1 third, right, because this is times, correct? Times the sine of 5x over x, right? This needs to be 5, so I've got to have a 5 up here. And the limit of this is 5 thirds times 1, which is 5 thirds. You sure? Yeah. Okay. Number four, the limit of x approaches 0 of x over the sine of x. equals what? This is the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over the sine of x over x. How do I know that? What is this thing here? How is this related to that? They are reciprocals. In other words, is 2 the same as 1 divided by 1 half? Is that 2? Is 2 thirds the same as 1 over 3 halves? So are these the same? So you have a property that says when you have quotients, the limits are, the limit is the limit of the quotients, correct? So what's the limit of 1 as x approaches 0? Yeah. 